Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to yet another episode of the Gentleman's Club. I'm your host, Mark Antipate, and I bring you yet again another whiskey review right here on the channel. And we are continuing to look at the Johnny Walker range of whiskeys. This time, we are going to be doing a review over the Black Label. If you've seen the previous episode, you would have known that I gave a quick introduction to Johnny Walker, and I started off by tasting the red label and I did not like it so much. Even for casuals, I don't know why anybody would want to drink this whiskey. It is complete and utter crap, so to speak. Even mixed with a drink, I did not like it so much. Hopefully this one is going to fare better because this one has been aged for 12 years, whereas this is a no age statement, meaning that they probably just distilled it for the minimum amount of time which is probably three years in a day before they throw it out there on the market and they're probably just churning this out on conveyor belts and slapping labels on it and shooting it around the world inside of rockets for a lot of people that just want to get uh shit faced dare i say it for them to consume but um for an entry whiskey, it could be so much better. If I was Johnny Walker, I would just get rid of red label completely and let 12 label be the entry level whiskey. This is the most sold whiskey, scotch whiskey brand in the world. And it is available inside of the most countries. And I gave a quick introduction to Johnny Walker inside the last video. And I said that, uh, that's right, it was introduced in 1865 is when they started uh, blending the Scotch whiskey. And this one, the red label was introduced in uh, 1945. I think that's the year the war ended, and uh, here we are at the Black Label. Before, I think this used to be, don't quote me on this, You, as you could tell, I didn't do much of my history lesson before this video, but I think this used to be... Uh, available at different ages but now it has become standard that the black label is always aged 12 years now as of uh, recent and this is how we are going to have it this one like the previous version is 40 percent abv alcohol by volume and as you can see, I'm not expecting too much from this. I'm expecting it to be better, but I'm not expecting too much from this, which is why I only purchased the 200 milliliter bottle. And I don't think I paid that much for this. If I were to fish around for my receipt, I think I paid 700 to 800 Japanese yen, which is maybe about seven to eight US dollars. You could do the math yourself for if I were to buy a 700 milliliter bottle of this, it would cost you just under 20 US dollars, but maybe a little bit more than 15. But seeing how I don't need 700 milliliters of this, this is adequate enough for my needs for me to conduct these reviews and some further test. This is maybe about I don't know, four to five drinks that I can get out of this, which is more than enough. Johnny Walker is now owned by the uh, Diageo, Diageo Company, which is a big producer, the world's second biggest producer of alcoholic and uh, spirits in the world, just behind a Chinese company, which I can't even pronounce the name of, so I'm not going to bother. But... Um, Diageo produces drinks such as uh, Smirnoff, Ciroc, and the well-beloved uh, Guinness beer. And Johnny Walker, of course. 
So we are going to have this. On the bottle, just as the previous one says, it says, by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen, Scotch Whiskey, Distillers, John Walker and Sons Limited, London. London, tongue tied there. And it has the, the heraldry on there. Johnny Walker Black Label Blended Scotch Whiskey. Distilled, bottled, sorry, distilled, blended, and bottled in Scotland. <laughs> it's very difficult to read this when you buy the 200 milliliter bottle because then the font decreases like fourfold. So, well, that's what you get for being a cheapskate. My glass has a little bit of beads inside of it, but not to fear. That's just because I had wash my glass maybe about an hour ago and it still contains a little bit of water inside of there which is very nice because it'll help to open up this whiskey just a little bit maybe it's not enough for that purpose but the beads of water is there already inside of the glass and out of the bottle this is smelling leagues better than the red label but there's only one way to find out for sure, and that's by giving it a nosing. <sighs> I laugh because if you seen the last video, I said this one smells a little bit like solvent. This is just a little bit better than that, but not Not by leaps and bounds, but it is better. This one kind of has a typical, very typical whiskey smell to it, but individual notes of something that you could pull out of here, not so much. Maybe that's maple on the nose. Very slightly. Something kind of smooth and sweet and creamy, but individual notes is difficult to pick apart. On the tongue, already by comparison, this is so much better. This is, this is the most typical borderline whiskey that I have ever drank. And this is not going in any direction, neither good nor bad. It's just something is very awkward about this. It's just just enough to adequate enough to satisfy your whiskey needs. Should you be craving for something and you're not trying to break the bank and buying that something to crave those needs very buttery not mouth watering but on the tongue very smooth and buttery that is I like to use rich for whiskeys that is really rich in flavor, but this is, this has the richness, 
the richness of 12 years maturity behind it, but it's not going towards any one category in in anything. It hits all the marks, quite nice, quite easy to go down at only 40%. You don't even really need to add water to this to open it up, as they say, or to try to release some of the smells behind it or anything else or some flavors. I think I'm going to leave it at that. We might as well go ahead and finish this. I can feel this growing on me. Who knows if I'll buy this again? Maybe I will. I think I have much need and much purpose for purchasing a whiskey like this again. The aftertaste is the best part about this. It doesn't taste like butter, but it's like a buttery filling on your tongue. The taste is not like the cinnamon flavor inside of this one. It's just, I can't explain it. It just tastes like matured whiskey. It has the definition of age inside of there, if not much definition of anything else. The reason why I would purchase this again, I'm a very sociable person. I go to a lot of social gatherings. When you want to go to a social gathering with friends like somebody organized a barbecue or something and they say it's like a potluck just come as long as you bring something anything it could be a drink it could be a food I can see myself as being the person that brings this whiskey and why would I choose this one because it's not gonna hurt me in the pockets too much and I feel it's something that a majority of people that are either into whiskey or even if you're trying to get them into whiskey. If they never really drank it like that before, but you want to introduce it to them at the party and you give them the spiel about the history of the company and you talk about it a little bit and you talk it up. And then they say, yeah, yeah, that sounds quite nice. I'm willing to try some. And you pour this for them. Are those people, are they going to be satisfied with this? Maybe not satisfied in saying that it's the greatest thing in the world. But they're at the same time, they're not going to say, Ah, that's, that was complete garbage. This is, this checks just the right amount of boxes to pass my standards of rigorous test. This this would make for a nice entry level whiskey for any company. All right, gentlemen, I think I've said enough. This is going to wrap up the Johnny Walker Black Label Aged 12 Years Whiskey Review. As always, make sure that you drink responsibly. Salute. And until next time, gentlemen, keep it classy.